What we have to do, however, is for ground state, the first set of determinants that we must include is actually W x additive, right? Because they, there is no Brillouin theorem between Hartree Fock and W x are a determinant. So now this block will not be 0, and obviously ground state will start to improve by interaction with the W x are determinants. And you can do ground state W x are and then singly excited. You will see that the singly excited contributes. So, I will just look at the structure now. Now that you have understood the structure very quickly, I will write down. So, let us first do take CI doubles. CI with only doubles. So, this is no longer there. Okay. So, I have Hartree Fock and W X array dependent. So, what will be the structure of the matrix now? Now, I can directly write. Again, I do not have to derive this. So, I can do the method of projection and keep deriving similarly. So, first structure is E Hartree Fock, one number. Then I will have a structure of elements between psi Hartree Fock, H, psi ABRH, correct? Exactly in the same manner. And this will be the conjugate. So, this will become psi CDTU, H, psi Hartree Fock. Please note that I am again using just like here. I had used psi bs for projection I am using psi cdt, a specific determinant which is part of ABRS. So, and then you have this block which is psi cdtu h psi ABRS. I hope all of you can just derive this routinely. You are starting with the Schrodinger equation, do method of projection. First psi Hartree Fock, then write psi cdt, project with psi cdtu. And then you will get this equation C0 and all C A B R S or C C D T whatever equal to E times C C D T. <coughs> if I am projecting with psi C D T U, I will get E times C C D T but actually it is a column. From that column only C D T U will survive, okay. So that is an eigenvalue equation in general. Now you see this is no longer 0 because these are there is no Brillouin theorem for this. In fact, these integrals are nothing but A B R S. A B anti-symmetrized R S and this is R S C D uh, the C D anti-symmetrized or T U anti-symmetrized C D U. So, these values will all be there, okay. So, this is a completely coupled matrix and you have to now diagonalize this. So, for the first time the ground state will no longer be E Hartree Fock. Ground state will now change because of the coupling terms here, here and so on, okay. And, and, and you will have a separate result. And now again you have to use Slater rule for each of them. So, this is of course quite clear, you will be using only Slater rule C. But this block, this small block which I am now calling HDD just in this terminology of HSS is the doubles into doubles. So, let us look at this block little bit more carefully. So, I have H doubles which is psi CDTU. So, you have H doubles into doubles that is psi CDTU. So, one of the WX array determinants H with another WX array determinant. Of course, eventually there will be a sum and so on to get an eigenvalue equation, but I am just looking at this matrix element. Now, you can see even by Slater rule, lot of integrals will vanish, even by Slater rule. And, and lots of integrals will remain, of course, by Slater rule. So, for example, so many possibilities are there. Let us say, a equal to C, B equal to D, R equal to T, S equal to E. So, I have two doubly excited determinants with respect to Hartree Fock, but they are same. Which rule you will apply? First one, so rule A, let us say rule A. I can keep on changing, maybe A is not equal to C, but B equal to D, R equal to T. S equal to E. Which rule will apply? B. A is not equal to C, but B is equal to T. Everything else is equal. So, rule B. Only one occupancy difference. 
So, if I give you such problems, will you be able to identify? Which rule to apply first? That is very important. Then write the rule in second level of problem. So, these are all technical problems, important. Of course, if you have, you can have two occupancy difference, rule C, but then there are many integrals which will be 0. You can see there will be 3, 4, up to 4 difference. When everything is different, what is the occupancy difference? A is not equal to, so A, B, A is not equal to C, B is not equal to D, so A is not equal to C, B is not equal to D, R is not equal to S, T is not equal to You understand? So, the ones which are projected here C, D to T U, they are different. So, different places T and U have come. And the ones which are replaced here are also different. Different places R and S have come. They can be, different places can be always interchanged. That is a negative sign. That is not a problem where it goes. But eventually, if you look at the differences, they have differences of R, S and T U in different, different places. So, here you have R, S and C, D. Here you have T U and A, B. So, let us take a 4 electron determinant. This will have R S C D because it originally started with A B C D. How to focus my A B C D? Let us say 4 electron. I am now replaced A B with R S. So, this determinant is nothing but R S C D, right? And this determinant would be nothing but T U C D. Uh, sorry, uh, A B T U. So, you can clearly see that if I compare the R S C D and A B T U, all are different. Right? So, it is a 4 occupation difference. Correct? I hope, I hope you can see. So, I am taking a simple 4 electron problem where my psi hat epoch is A, B, C, D. With these are the spin orbitals. Then I am writing what is psi C, D, T, U. Psi C, D, T, U is C, D replaced by T, U. You should be able to write this. So, it is A, B, T, U. Correct? And then I have psi A, B, R, S. They are all different. Okay, so it's a different block. So A B is now replaced by R S. So you have R S C D. Since they are different, everything is changed now. Of course, if some of them are equal, then it would be a different case. Okay, so a maximum of four occupation difference, which are anyway zero. There are three occupation difference, which are also zero. Only up to two they will remain. The point that I am trying to say that this block will have lots of zeros coming from Slater rule. And then again further because of spatial symmetry, of course. But even rule A is applicable here, just like rule A was also applicable here for single singles when A R is equal to B S. So, between there will be a diagonal term. So, basically they are the diagonal terms. So, wherever I have a diagonal terms here, you are applying rule A because diagonal term is nothing but the same determinant on both sides, right. It has to be rule A. And the off diagonal terms can be rule B, rule C and 0 or 0 depending on what they are. So, this requires a little bit of practice and I will ask everybody to do it. Take a 4 electron problem, 5 electron problem, 6 electron. Do this, you know, make it different, just see what you are getting so that you will know what rules to apply for the, the, the CI problem, okay. So, so, essentially this is how we analyze and then you diagonalize because of the fact that there is a coupling term. Now the energy will change. So what will be the result of the energy? We will discuss. So in fact, the CI problem will require at least two to three classes. We'll see uh, to discuss this. So we'll first do CI doubles because this is very important. Then we will see how singles in the presence of doubles starts to contribute. We have already noticed that singles alone does not change the ground state energy. But we will see if I have taken doubles and then singles, then singles has a role even for ground state energy despite Brillouin's theorem because doubles is already there. So, that coupling will actually help. So, we will see this, but first we will more thoroughly analyze double CI and we will place this CI doubles in perspective to perturbation theory. For example, MP2 energy, how these energies are different, they are by itself very interesting study uh, before we go to CISD and after we tell CISD the rest is really a technology, you know triples, quadruples, I am not going to bother. What we are going to do after that is to look at the deficiencies of approximate CI. Full CI is of course no problem, but we can never do full CI. I, as I told you, MCN is too large. So what are the deficiencies of approximate CI? 
is something that we will see why CI is not good, why perturbation is better, CI is not good and why couple cluster is definitely the best. So, that will come later, later part of the course when you understand what are the important chemistry that we need to ensure that our theories must have, okay. All right. So, next class is uh, we will continue here. Thank you.